So I think it's started. Yeah. Perfect. So welcome everyone. And um, today we're going to be looking at some time management and organisation skills. And um, my name is Kiva Kavna, and I'm assistant psychologist here in Minute. And this is my colleague Eva. Hi. Um, so just to have a brief overview, if it'll work for me. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so the aims of today's session are to look at so uh, building time management skills, scheduling your time, goal setting, getting that work life balance, which can be quite difficult when you're first coming into college because it's quite a different um, thing from what secondary school is like. Um, and it's something, you know, even myself and Eva, we continually work at trying to get that work life balance. So it's a skill for life. And um, if at any time you have any questions, like Aoife said, just, you know, let us know. And today won't, it won't take too long. So we have plenty of time for questions. Um, so obstacles. Um, what stops us from getting started? So distractions, so things like our phones, looking at the news, anything like that, not knowing where to start and feeling overwhelmed. Um, especially if you have a number of assignments and different modules than what you've taken before, it can be a little bit confusing trying to figure out where to get started and then not knowing what you have to do. Um, and also a big one is perfectionism. I think everyone likes to have their things up to a high standard and it's just to be forgiven with yourself, particularly at the minute, because we're learning a completely new way at the minute with remote learning. So just to be mindful of that. Um, and so the avoidance of the task can create short term feelings of relief, but ultimately in the long term, it just create, increases anxiety about the task. Um, so if you're putting it off and putting it off, you're just going to make it a little bit more stressful if you're leaving it to the last minute. And I've realised that my gift doesn't actually work in slideshow, so this was actually meant to be a moving one, but <laughs> unfortunately it won't work. Um, but just the importance of time management, so it minimises stress and um, it helps you kind of meet deadlines a little bit more effectively. It can achieve your goals and helps you maintain quality in your work. And again, going back to that balance between work, college and personal life, if you've effectively scheduled your time, you know, you can see where you have time in the evening to relax or how you can adjust to the timetable for yourself to make sure you're getting that balance correct. Um, so just a few short tips and we'll be kind of discussing some of the main ones as we go throughout and you might have used some of these tips before, uh, but plan ahead. So using a daily and weekly planner. Um, so that's that's really useful and it can help you prioritize your tasks and um, so rank them in order of importance and um, delegating so if you can get help from other people so if you have you know maybe any group work so to work together or if there's anything in you know your personal life you can get help from other people creating to-do lists and using post-it notes establishing a routine is really important and um, trying to set like a particular time you do your study at knowing when your lectures are on and when your time to or sorry when your tutorials are on and um, I think we would agree that having a routine is really helpful for yeah and I suppose we discussed that last week Eve as well yeah so I suppose it's when you're studying from home it can be very easy to stay, sleep in and if it's a recorded lecture so having kind of a routine every day just like your normal college week um or work week that we work, work nine to five so yeah. um, having that um routine is good yeah definitely um and then that's then setting alarms and reminders i'm not sure about you but i have so many alarms to make sure that i'm getting things done or have reminders for if i have sessions coming up so always have little reminders there just so you're keeping on track um one that's really important i think is breaking down your assignment into small manageable chunks so looking at what you have to do, which you can go if you do your to do list, prioritize what you have to do and then say, OK, so for the example here, Monday I'm going to do two readings, Tuesday I'm going to read over my notes and on Wednesday I'm going to write an introduction to my assignment. So breaking it down into smaller chunks can just make it a little bit easier um, and can reduce those feelings of being overwhelmed by what you have to get done. Um, and going back to the having a daily planner, invest in a planner or use your team's outlook planner that's really really useful um, and again set realistic and achievable goals minimize distractions has anybody ever used a forest app it's a really really useful one it's a quite nice one if you do do you know how to explain it a little bit better than what yeah I I suppose, um it's not that you get on your phone and the incentive is that you're going to build a forest so um, once you have it set, you set a timer of like how long you'd study. So 20 minutes that you're, you set out your goal for studying. So 20 minutes, then it sets this timer um, and it kind of 
stops all your notifications from coming in from like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or TikTok. Um, and um, once if you don't go on your phone for that length of time, you get to grow, grow a tree or something. And as your studying continues, you build a tree and you build a forest. So it, it's really good. And you can see your progress as well. So um, when you log into it again, like you can see, oh, how many trees you've done. So that means you've done so many hours of study. So um, it's really good for your, for your phone if you download it and it's free. That's a nice one. Mm. Um, and then use incentives, so ways to motivate yourself. And we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Um, so getting started, so it's really important to remember that activation precedes motivation. Um, so what does this mean? Um, sometimes we don't feel motivated to complete a task if we're not sure how to do it, if it's difficult or if it's unenjoyable. So therefore we must activate the behaviour first. So start working and the motivation will increase as you get into the work. And there's a five minute rule you can use. So if you're struggling to get started, tell yourself you're going to do it for five minutes without stopping. You can set a timer for five minutes as well if that helps. And then see if you still want to stop at, after the five minutes. Usually you'll find, you know, if you're working on it, once you've got into it, it's a little bit easier to keep going. Starting is always the hardest part and it always feels a little bit more daunting to start than when you get into, get into it. So if your assignment isn't due for a few weeks, I think it's also important to say to set, put a start date in your own calendar. So say if you had an assignment due at the end of November, decide you're going to start it and put it in. Even if it's just you're going to research or you're going to look over your notes, put that into your diary and then, you know, stick to it. So like we say, get started. Don't overthink it. Just start writing even if you know um, you might change it. And doing drafts of essays or assignments, that's really important. You can change anything like that and um, it's important to remember. OK, so schedule in your week. Um, so I think it's uh, really useful to put some time aside each week to uh, plan your week. So on a Sunday, maybe spend 20 minutes and look at what you have to do this week. Is there assignments um, are on, what tutorials are on and have um, a timetable in front of you that you can start filling things in. And just think while you're planning it out, what commitments do you have this week? Um, how long, if you have any labs that are on campus, how long will it take you to get there and back? Um, and what times, you know, do you find studying a bit easier? Some people like to study in the morning, some people like to study in the evening. Um, so just keep, keep those things in mind while you're looking at filling in a schedule. And then use a weekly schedule and include all your demands. So to include your meal times, you know, your breaks, any leisure um, activities you like to do, if anyone does any training um, and also include study breaks. It's really important to have study breaks and um, flexi time is also one to include every day. So you can use this um, you can put an hour in each day and you can use this if you need some extra time to look over assignments and um, to catch up on a lecture and um, to catch up on notes or if you, you know, if you if you you're caught up on the day, you can have the hour for yourself as well. Um, and it's also important to stick to your timeline, be realistic, but just to remember that things will come up and that's just part of life and not to beat yourself up. Just take a breath and remember that, you know, you can get back on track. Um, and this is a really nice example of a weekly timetable. And as you can see, it's colour coded, which makes it a little bit easier to follow like what's going on. Um, and you can have as, as, as it is there. And um, you have your Spanish all in purple. Um, so it makes it a little bit easier to know when those tutorials or those lectures are on. And to include as well, if you have any work going on, um, all your modules, your dinner times, and you can set see your study time slotted in as well. And what's really useful about putting, you know, your time in this way is you can see what slots are available that you can use as study. So you can see on this example, Friday is a good day to put some extra study in um, or to use it if you have to, if you're commuting, you know, to, to use those times as well. Um, has anybody used a timetable like this before? Or does anybody find it useful using a timetable like this? I know it's something I have to schedule my time. If not, I'll forget stuff yep. or I'll have to do with yes to Oh, fantastic. Few guesses. Um, and I think it's really important to like create one especially at the start of each term, so semester one and semester two, have your kind of concrete lectures in and um, 
any MCQs that you have during the week and what time you're going to do them. I know there's a lot of MCQs. Um, this year, you might have a weekly assignment or whatever. So putting that study in and when you're going to do it and what the deadline is and then reviewing it every week because things can change as well. Lectures can be cancelled. You might have a big assignment too as well. So you might need to figure out when you're going to fit that in as well. So, um, But I suppose it's not just a study timetable. It's really a life kind of timetable. You're putting everything in there. So you're putting your work, your exercise, your meals and your breaks as well are so important, especially if you're at home looking at a screen. You need to kind of manage your breaks as well. Definitely. And take those breaks because you do need them. If you're looking at a computer all day, every day, it can get, it can get to be a lot. Um, especially if you're using your computer then to watch Netflix in the evening, your eyes need a need a bit of a break. Um, okay. So set daily goals with reminders to complete the most important tasks first. So this is a nice um, image there to your to do, you're doing and done. So it's always nice to be able to take stuff off as being done and out of the way. Um, so if you're putting daily goals on, just you know track them and see how you're going. So it, within that then, it's also important to track the things you have to get done. And a way of doing that for college is to make up an assignment planner. So this is a tracker to see what continuous assessment you have to do. And I think this is a, a really nice example. So you have your modules on one side, you have your continuous assessment so you can pop in if you have like a, a weekly journal to complete or if you have MCQs, anything like that. But in the due dates, um, if it's been completed and then if you have any exams at the end of the semester. So it's useful to do that. If you do anything after today's session, sit down and do this this evening. So then you know what's coming up over the next the rest of this semester and then do that each semester as, as you go through college. Um, and a lot and of then, that information would be, sorry Kiva, a lot yeah. of that information would be in your course handbook on Moodle. So you, some lecturers might have mentioned what's coming up, but normally in the course handbook, it'll tell you um, what, how many assignments you need to do, how many exams and what percentage each is worth. So if it's a 20% exam and 80% continuous assessment. So make sure that you're using your course handbook as well. And saying that as well, the labs, keep an eye if you have any labs and uh, Put, pop them in if you have a percentage review on them as well as handy for the assignment tracker to put any of the percentage grades that you, you have to keep track of them um, I know that I found that handy when I was going through it um, so think long term a term at a glance so create a long term calendar and this can help you plan out your full semester and in, in that include big projects due dates and exams and um, think of what else you're involved with. So if you have any, you know, extracurricular activities, if you have any training to do and um, to include them in there and um, use colour coding like was in the example and that can help you different, differentiate between your events um, and it's kind of helpful to have ones that are separate from, you know, your personal stuff to your academics. So just keeping it separate and um, in the colour and then use this to answer the questions when you're planning for your weekly schedule. So um, when do you have to plan ahead to meet these obligations and what time do you study best at and when can that be included? And um, because like I said earlier, some people find it easier to study in the morning, others would be afternoon and others will be at night. So just include that into your time and make sure it works for yourself. Um, so setting goals, has anyone ever heard of smart goals before? Maybe, maybe not. Um, so smart goals is really useful and um, so goals are long term vision, short term motivation. So if we set goals for ourselves, we can give it can give us focus. It can help us to organize our time and also the resources we have to achieve these goals. And um, so there's three different levels of goals. There's long term, medium and short. So long term would be, you know, these are just examples that came to me. Um, so maybe to get a degree, to buy a house, to uh, to work in your career or maybe travel the world. So they can be as materialistic as you know, as you want them to be. Um, the medium term goals are kind of helping you work towards achieving those long term goals. So passing this academic year, you know, maybe renting a place for the first time, getting experience in the area that you'd like to work in. Um, and then also short term goals might be to submit assignments this semester to make friends and to even look into career options that you might be interested in because it can be also always hard to decide what you want to do. Um, and so then when you're setting smart goals, the goals should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time based. It can be really helpful when you're sitting down to doing your assignments. 
So if you look at our example here, um, if you have an essay, so your goal could be to write my introduction to this essay. Um, measurable, I'm going to write 300 words. Achievable, um, yes, I can, man I can manage 300 words. Um, is it relevant? Yep, it's for my deadline that's coming up soon. And then time based, I think I'm going to sit down tonight and do it between 6 to 8 p.m. So if you remember specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time based, it can be really helpful when you're planning out your, your schedule and also your assignments. OK, so just a quick example of a smart or not smart goal. So I plan to do more study on a weekly basis so I can watch more of Netflix at weekend. So does anybody think that that's smart or not smart? I suppose it is a goal, but is it yeah. smart goal or is it? Yeah. OK, just wait so, for a second. <laughs> not, smart. Not, not smart. Not smart. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that would be considered a not smart goal. So the next one, I am. Um, I will spend my two hour break on a Monday morning preparing my assignment with the nearest deadline so I won't have to do it uh, this weekend and then I can watch Netflix. So that would be a little bit more effectively, you know, thought out and you can, you know, schedule it into your week. Um, OK. Um, so to take regular breaks, I know we've mentioned this a couple of times. And I think we mentioned it last week as well, but just to make sure you're taking the breaks throughout the day um, studying and working doesn't you know, have to take up all your time. You can still do the things that you love and things that you enjoy. So make time for your hobbies. And it's really just especially now that we're working from home, it's really important to take some time away from the computer and catch up with friends, catch up with family um, obviously in a, a safe way at the minute. Um, so if you're stressed and overwhelmed, do take a break, go for a walk, talk to someone, do some mindfulness, you know, if that's something that you, that you find helpful, whatever works for yourself. Um, that's that's really important. Um, so setting time limits. Um, so this again goes back to that work life balance. If you stick to time limits, you can then enjoy your breaks guilt free. Um, but it's also important to remember to actually go back and do some more study when you when you've scheduled scheduled can't speak now, when you have scheduled it in. Um, so for as the example says, if you say you're going to study for two hours during the day, stick to it, put your phone away, and then in the evening you can actually sit down and relax without thinking, oh, I have to go back and do that assignment. Um, so it's it's really good for you know boosting your self esteem and your confidence, and it helps with your motivation as well. Because once you know you have something to look forward to, you can engage with that study a little bit easier. Um, and using ascent incentives. So as a little dash hound is running towards a pretzel, you know there's always something that can help us be a bit more motivated to engage with with our work. And um, we all need to be re rewarded. We all need something to look forward to. Um, so long term goals can be difficult to work towards because they do feel quite far away. But if we know what motivates ourselves, we can kind of use those things um, to help us you know, engage with that work and it can um, motivate you to get things done in advance rather than leaving them to the last minute. And then that increases your stress. Um, so give yourself an engagement goal. Um, so going back to Netflix, if you know you're going to work in the um, work throughout today, you can watch Netflix then in the evening. Um, so just do something that you enjoy. So does anybody have any examples of things that they like to do in the evening? I know myself is getting out for a walk, getting that fresh air. Is anyone else uh, enjoys any ideas that we can do, especially at the minute when we're all so remote? Yoga. You got What's yoga. That? That's good. Yeah. Oh, is a good one. Yeah. yeah. Relaxation. Yeah. Yeah. That's important. Mm. And exercise as well um yeah so I suppose when you're sitting down at a screen all day you need to try and um be conscious that you need to move away from your screen and everything and don't be kind of in the same position for a few hours just make sure you're getting up and about and taking your breaks um because I suppose you just need to give your brain a break your eyes a break and um, from the screen as well um yeah so that's just something to be conscious of and then using it incentives is is really good to help you motivate you to to get the work done and then you can kind of relax in the evening time or whenever um, and yeah. um, okay and this one I think is actually important and it's, you know sometimes the 
it's hard to remember to do it, but it can be very tempting to start to ease your jobs and get distracted by uh, the jobs that aren't as important. So if you get due to the more difficult aspects of your assignments early, just start with them and then the longer you because the longer you put it off the more formidable it will seem um and then after you've done the most difficult part it, the rest of it seems a lot easier to do um and it's just nicer to get the most difficult part done and then it, you can breathe a little bit easier um okay and some other tips and tricks as well that are really useful so if you've decided you're going to do an assignment or if you've you know, you've put your time, you've planned your time that you're going to be doing some study. Tell people you're busy or rearrange for another day and um, batch cook some meals and prepare snacks at the start of the week. So this can be a really useful one if you're cooking, you know, just double up and then you have like lunch for the next day or you have dinner for the evening because um, cooking can actually take a, bit, a good bit of time. Um, but it's also if it's something that you really enjoy, then schedule in that time. Make sure you have that time there that you can spend some time cooking and enjoy it. But if you're coming up to maybe exam week, um, just be mindful that you might have less time to spend on cooking and have some stuff ready and in the freezer. Active in the study process. So, you know, if you're finding it difficult, chances are somebody else's as well. So maybe set up a study group that you can, you know, a study group um, or a chat where you can ask each other questions um, and you can all engage with the process. Um, it makes it a lot easier, and especially now that we are so remote. It's a nice way to connect with your peers. And um, one thing as well, don't overthink it, just get started. Like we've mentioned earlier, the more you think about it, the more like um, formidable it will seem. So if you get started, you can kind of see, OK, I can I can manage it a little bit more. And getting started might just mean sitting down and putting um, ideas into a mind map. So writing down what you know about it and looking at the question and seeing what you have to answer. Action builds momentum. So doing anything is better than nothing. So, you know, doing a mind map, you're thinking about what you have to get done. So that can be really useful. Be re realistic in what you set out to achieve. Um, so you're going to write 300 words might be more manageable than saying you're going to write 800 parts in one sitting. So just being, you know, realistic with uh, what you want to do. And even on your to-do list, sometimes you can get in the habit of writing a really long to-do list um, that it's not realistic that you're going to get it all done um, in the day. So just thinking about your goals, your realistic goals and writing what can, what needs to be prioritised for today and what needs can be left till tomorrow or the next day. Um, because if you don't get all your list done, it's very kind of frustrating, um, but you're just being over realistic um, and not. Yeah, so uh, just making sure that, you, that you're that you setting your realistic goals that you can, you yeah. will achieve. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I heard a tip before that if you leave, if you have a to do list for any given day, just have seven things on it and don't have any more than seven things on any given day. And because it's a little bit more achievable and usually there's a few things that you can do like small things you can do. Yeah. And if you're looking at your to-do list and you have like things that can be done in five minutes, get them done and out of the way. And, you know, it's just a little bit nicer to get those things out of the way. Um, and make a commitment. So make make deadlines and stick to them. Um, and again, with that, just be mindful that things will come up. You know, that's just the way things are at the minute, but that's completely fine. Just go back and um, look at your schedule and get back on track. That's completely fine. Do, does anyone have any tips themselves that they found useful that we haven't mentioned? One thing that I'd like to add on, Kiva, is yeah. um, just just with this year, really, it's when there's pre-recorded lectures. Um, sometimes you might have your timetable, might you might have a lot of pre-recorded lectures on a day and then you might have another day where it's kind of quiet. So on a Monday, so you might have five, six lectures and um, so try and like move them around. Is there any way that you can kind of spread them out during the week um, so it's manageable and so you're not exhausted after Monday and after five, six classes online? Um, and if they're all pre-recorded, you should. Um, but if they're live, so I suppose figuring out which ones are live on your timetable, which ones are pre-recorded and actually writing them on your on your timetable so you know what you need to need to do and then if there's any pre-recorded ones that you can kind of move to a quieter day and um, kind of have have a look at that and see see um, if you can manage your time better as well. That, that's something else. I suppose this year more than any other year is easier yeah. to do that. <laughs> Definitely. That's a good one. Yeah. Mm. 
Has anyone anyone ones that they'd like to share? Okay. So then just in conclusion, um so organization, so you know, having your uh, timetables ready, to do lists, they're really helpful. I have one every day of the week. Setting smart goals, really helpful as well. Um technology and apps at Forest App Outlook. Outlook calendar is fantastic if you haven't used it, you know, maybe you'd watch a YouTube um, clip about it because they are. It is a really helpful one um, and you can set your time for like half an hour. You possibly have to do 15 minutes or an hour schedule so you can put in your breaks there as well. And then the five minute rule. Um, OK, so has anybody got any questions for us? You can put them in the chat or um, you can say them aloud. Um, that's somebody just going. Uh, thanks for all the info. And there's a worksheet up on the Student Central online supports web page. Um, it's called Five Ways to Manage and Make Time. I think that's what it's called. And there's like a blank timetable um, um, that you can fill in yourself. And there's an example of a time, to, uh, an assignment planner and a blank one as well. As well. So if you want to, um, print that and write it out yourself. So there's there's ones up there that um that you can use yourself. There's just thank a lot of thank yous, Kiva here. Oh, <laughs> you're <that>. welcome. Um, <laughs> Hopefully it was helpful. That was really interesting. Thank you. Uh, where will we find the recording? Yeah, so we have to put up the recording and um, we'll probably put it up on the Student Central web page as well, but we can email it to you as well. And um, I suppose I'll just put in the feedback form be before people leave as well. Um, if anybody gets but a I, chance, it's only two minutes, so um, fill it in for us. That'd be great. Only five questions. Oh no, yeah. that's the join link. <laughs> and the, the recording actually comes up on the chat for anyone who's joined us today. And um, so if you go into the chat in like half an hour, maybe it should be in the in the chat function. Yeah, I just put in um, a form in there. I can email it to you as well. Um, if you can just fill it out. Um, it's just five questions. Um, yeah, so the the where you can get the timetable um, is on the Student Centre web page. Um, I can email that out to you as well. Um, just just so you can print out and, and rather than creating a new kind of template, there's, there's one up there. So I can email that to you with, with just the online form. And hopefully the, we'll have to get these upkeep of these um, videos yeah. as well so hopefully by next week the one from last week and the one from today will be up next week and we'll 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 keep on them, putting them up there and um, and then next week we're kind of looking at different kind of study skills so um so note taking and um active reading and things like that so it, it will be helpful to do um, does anybody have any questions? I'll just check the chat again. And if anybody wants to wait until we're finished recording to ask questions, that's no problem as well. If anyone's. Perfect. I'll stop. Well, I'll stop recording. So. Cool. Um,